Iwang sa Gisag Kultura ng Pilipinas Jeepneys blare their horns and drivers bark at commuters lined up by the road. Vendors crowd the sidewalks, selling mangoes, bananas, coconuts, fish balls, orange quail eggs, grilled chicken intestines, and feet. Some sell an assortment of merchandise. Families treat their kids their favorite burgers. Humble food stalls surround big establishments offering meals at lesser costs. These are typical everyday sketches of the streets of the Philippines, and within the interplay of light and shadow are trademarks of the country's culture and stamps of Filipino identity. The Philippines is home to over 97 million people, spread across 7,107 islands. That is not counting more than 2 million Filipinos spread around the world. Its people are as diverse as the many isles that comprise the country and dot the sea. Yet despite being segregated by geography and made distinct among others by ethnicity, Filipinos share common characteristics, history, tradition, beliefs, and culture that form an identity unique to them as a race. National heroes made great emblems of Philippine identity and stirred among Filipinos a great sense of pride. However, over the years, heavy influences from other countries, especially from the West, watered down nationalistic sentiments and blurred the younger generation's idea of who they are as a people. The sharp sound of the kulintang was replaced by the beatboxing of rap songs. The graceful folk dances were supplanted by the popping moves of hip-hop. Drowning in obscurity are the faces of the many great Filipino men and women who fought for independence and freedom. Suffocating in the proliferation of foreign slangs are the local languages that tie the people to their roots. And sinking in the inundation of important fashion and manners are the simple and modest lifestyles and values that once set the Filipinos apart from other races. The Filipinos are becoming strangers to their own culture and identity. But before the storm of influences completely wash away the country's soul and its memory, the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, NCCA, took great care in culling 2,000 icons of Philippine culture, art, and education to reintroduce them to today's Filipinos, especially the youth, and remind them of who they are as a people and a nation. From these efforts sprung Diwang Sagisag Kultura ng Pilipinas, which is now the institutional flagship project of the NCCA Subcommission on Cultural Dissemination, in partnership with the Philippine Cultural Education Program and the Department of Education. Under this project, the subcommission devised three programs that ultimately aims to instill the value and significance of these icons in every Filipino's heart and mind, and build from them a strong foundation of Philippine identity. The first program is called the Sagisag Kultura Rap Contest, and it invited elementary students from public schools to craft poems that expressed their appreciation of the icons known or familiar to them and set them to rap music. The second program challenged high school students from public schools to learn the icons not only by memory but also by heart and tested their awareness of Philippine culture, art, and education through the Sagisag Cultura quiz. The third program, the Leksyong Sagisag Cultura, inspired the teachers to design lesson plans that integrated the icons in teaching various subjects in school. For a month, beginning on October 12, 2013, 
The NCCA scanned the regions to look for the best rap groups. And the brightest Quizby students that would compete in the island cluster level. And then ultimately in the national level. The team's first stop was Iloilo City, known during its glory days as the Queen City of the South, given its many structures that reflected the majestic architecture of the Spanish colonial period. Then they traveled to northern Mindanao, where they were welcomed by the warm smiles of the people in Cagayan de Oro. They soon visited Pagadian City, which once served as the stopover of traders that did business between the Zamboanga Peninsula and the other larger towns in the northern part of the province. On November 7, they landed in Tacloban City. Dumating kami doon dahil alam namin na ang Region 8 ay nakahanda para sa competition. Dumating kami ng, ng November 7 at alam namin na handa ang lugar na aming pagtatanghalan. Bagamat uh, hindi namin din inaakala na ganun kalakas ang pagdating ng Yolanda. Pero... Wala nang urungan yon kaya nando doon kami, nakahanda kami na gawin ng competition, pero pagdating ng umaga, ng alas 5 ng umaga, kasama kami doon sa Lumilikas, doon sa aming tinulog ng hotel. At uh, hindi namin na isagawa ang gusto naming competition dahil nga sa mga pangyayari. Unfortunately, nang lumabas kami ng aming bahay noong pa ang devastation talaga, Grabe ang naging uh, impact at pagkawasak ng pakloban na ang nakita namin ay wasak na mga tahanan, ang putik ay mataas, may baha, may mga patay sa gilid at um, may mga, may mga naguguto, may nagahant ng pagkain, may mga tulala, hindi, hindi malaman kung saan pupunta, lakaran ng lakaran ng mga tao, parang walang direksyon ng buhay, may, um, may looting, um, may mga nakabagsak na puno, nakabagsak na poste. Ang lahat ng iyon ay nakita namin doon sa limang oras sa paglalakad namin mula hotel hanggang sa airport. Refusing to be crippled by the trauma of the experience, the cruelest tempests that ever hit the country and even the world, the team found ways to continue their mission with a heavy heart and in grief of the misfortune that befell the Filipinos in Tacloban, they boarded the C-130 plane bound for Cebu. From there, they made their way to Butuan, 
described in history books as one of the oldest settlements in the Philippines. High spirits soon turned and everyone was back in the game. Next, they visited South Central Mindanao, specifically the crown city of the South, Coronadal. After Mindanao, the team scoured Luzon for the best regional representatives. They stopped first at Calamba, Laguna, the birthplace of Philippine national hero, Jose Rizal. Then headed to Manila and held the competition at Manila High School, which is found within the old and once strong Spanish fortress of Intramuros. They further moved up north to San Fernando, Pampanga, a city that carries the Christian characteristic of the Philippines in its name. It is named after King Fernando VI of Spain and recognizes Saint Ferdinand III as its patron. From there, they traveled to the coastal town of the Guban, Pangasinan, in the Ilocos region. The province was named after the local term for salt, asin. As it is too close to the sea, Ilocana food is known to be characteristically salty, reflecting the life of the people who thrived in the riches of the South China Sea. The team soon exchanged the coasts of Ilocos for the rugged terrain of the Cordillera, administrative region. They reached Baguio in mid-November. The Christmas season had started to set in and the temperatures in the city had begun to drop Yet the energy among contestants remained buoyant. Then the group visited Tugegarao City in the Cagayan Valley. The province is known for its limestone caves, particularly the Kalau Cave, which houses a chapel beneath its nature-carved arches.
The second to the last stop in Luzon is Legazpi City, Albay, in the Bicol region, named after the Spanish conquistadors Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. The city includes in its many attractions the iconic Mayon volcano. The team traveled to the south of the country again, particularly to Cotabato City. Cotabato may be regarded as the seat of the Philippine Islamic identity, as it boasts the largest mosque in the country, the Sultan Haji Hassan al Walkia Masjid, or Grand Mosque. Calapan Mindoro in Luzon rounded up the tour of the 17 regions in search for the best and brightest students. From these regional winners emerged the best competitors that represented the three island clusters of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The first Diwang Sagisa Kultura ng Filipinas culminated in Malolos, Bulacan. Although the old cobbled stones of the Spanish era have been replaced by concrete pavements, one still cannot help but feel like walking on hollowed ground in the city. Malolos, after all, is considered as the cradle of national heroes, as it has been linked to many patriots and heroes now grace the pages of history. Names such as General Emilio Aguinaldo, Pedro A. Paterno, Dr. Jose P. Rizal, Antonio Luna, Felipe Calderon, and General Isidro D. Torres, among others. The Baraswain Church, in particular, bore witness to the many Catiboneros, Filipino revolutionaries, fighting to liberate the country from the oppressive Spanish colonial rule. It stands prominently in history as the site where the first Philippine Congress convened in 1898, where the Malolas Constitution was drafted, and where the first Philippine Republic was born in 1899. It is quite apt, then, but the final competition came to the city that held much of the Philippine history, culture, and identity. On December 9, 2013, the Hiyas ng Bulacan Convention Center teamed with ardent supporters of students who came to compete for the title of Sagisag Kultura Best Rap Group and Sagisag Kultura Quiz Championship. Every thread woven into the fabric of the children's costumes and every bead strung together that hung on their necks and worn on their heads spoke centuries of the country's rich heritage. Seen on stage as the groups fuse images of cultural icons and the rise and fall of modern beats, the group became a reminder that a country's culture has evolved with its people. And it is a matter of how the nation has accepted foreign influences and expressed them without losing its anchor to the past that defined its people as a race. The Philippine vaunts over 2,000 cultural icons, many are seen in everyday life, but familiarity has concealed them in the shadows, in an environment of people whose attention is more often captured by what is foreign and new.
natin ang pasisimulan ang sagisa kultura ng Pilipinas Quiz National Level. Lahat ng katanungan, larawan at kasagutan ay nakabatay sa NCCA 2000 Sagisa Kulturang Filipino bilang sanggunian. As students identify them and their names are once more said out loud, they are brought to light. Each icon remembered strengthens the country's culture and, and invigorates its soul. Antique SPED Center embodied today's living culture. Okay, at ang winner, ang ating magiging na binata galing sa Pisayas, Adrian Rigor. While Adrian Rigor of the Regional Science High School for Region 6 inspired a passionate learning of Philippine identity. Diwang is the brainchild of the NCCA Commissioner and National Artist for Literature, Virgilio Almario. Itong programang ito na Diwang ay bahagi ng uh, pinaka centerpiece ng uh, mga gawain sa uh, Subcommission on Cultural Dissemination. Ang amin kasi ngayong uh, pinaka-direction ay eh, tumulong sa pagwawasto ng ating cultural values at uh, pagpapalaganap ng mga higit na kapakipakinabang na halagahan o values para sa ating mga mamayan at sa ating bansa. So, yung sagisag kultura na siyang pinagsimulan nitong programa ngayon ay eh, isang paraan upang mas ipakilala pa sa mga tao ang mga bagay na dapat nilang ikarangal bilang mga Pilipino. Kaya sa pamagitan ng sagisag kultura, gusto naming ito. Halimbawa, nagsimula kami ngayon sa 2000. Sa pamagitan ng 2000 na sagisag kultura, magkakaroon ng isang mas, uh, mas malawak na kaalaman ang isang bata tungkol sa kanyang bansa at tungkol sa kanyang sarili. At ito namang diwang ay isang paraan lamang para makatulong sa inculcation ng mga sagisag kultura. Sa pamagitan kasi nitong mga contest na aming sinimulan ngayong taong to, ay gusto naming uh, ayun, maging uh, involved ang mga teachers. At yung sagisag kultura ay pumasok sa pagtuturo, sa silid-aralan, maging bahagi ng mga leksyon, kahit ano ang subject at masama sa mga learning materials na ginagamit ng mga kabataan. For him, it is an offering of cultural icons that are not lost but simply eclipsed by the giant billboards of foreign influences. More importantly, it is a celebration of the rejuvenation of Philippine culture and identity. As the day's program came to an end, and the crowd thinned, the curtains have remained open. The people knew that Diwang has just begun, and they will be back next year for a more spectacular celebration. Oh!